And welcome into Press Box Live. I'm Stan the Fan Charles of Press Box and PressBoxOnline.com. With me is Ross Grimsley, the old left-hander with the mustache. And we're going to talk go. to another old left-hander tonight. <laughs> and I can say that because I'm just about as old. It's old left-hander night. Actually, I'm older. Yeah. Yeah, it's old left-hander <laughs> day, except I'm a right-hander. And that's Scott McGregor. But first, a word about the Costas Inn. As all of you know that watch these Zooms, Costas Inn has really stepped up their game in the curbside world. Uh, they know that certain percentage of people aren't still comfortable going inside to eat, uh, eat out and dine. So they've got curbside. It's all set for you. Go to costasin.com. You can order your food, pay for your food. You can try not to pay for it, but I don't think they'll pack it up unless you pay for it. And then you stop out there. You don't even have to get out of your car and everything is packed immaculately. Your uh, crab soup, your cream of crab soup is not going to fall over the ribs for your mother-in-law or anything like that. So the Costas Inn, the best place in town for curbside, or as we old timers used to call it, take out <laughs> all right joining us today is uh, one of baltimore's favorite left-handers and that is scott mcgregor and scott uh ross gave me the news you're in the middle of packing up and leaving the state of maryland yeah we are it's uh it's time to get closer to the kids they were all here for a long time and they've kind of gone away but we've had a few <coughs> excuse me we've had a few issues come up this year with our family, my brother and her sister, where it made me realize, you know what, we need to be right next to somebody. Yes. As we get old, somebody's going to have to be the one to take care of us. So <laughs> right. we, we had to go 3,000 miles to do it. I don't want them to have to do that. All right. So you're heading to Tennessee. Yeah, we're right outside Knoxville, Lenore City, on a, in a golfing community. So bring your clubs and come there on. There you back. go. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. We're on the way. So I just want to ask you again, you were traded for, we made the big trade, the 10 or 11 player trade with the Yankees in June of 76. And you came over with, with Rudy May, Rick Dempsey, Dave Pagan. And Tippy. And Tippy and Tippy, of course. And Elrod and, uh, and Kenny Holtzman went over the other way. Yeah, the I'm old guys went over there. Something. Yeah. Who else? <laughs> the old guys went over there. And the old guys went over there. Yeah. All right. Grant so Jackson, that's Doyle. That's Alexander, right, Grant Jackson. Kenny Holtzman. Yep. yep. Yeah. So, uh, boy, it's a lot of left-handers. Yeah, today. Grant there was. Jackson, Kenny Holtzman. And they they, were, they, they were aged a bit, too. So, yeah. so I know you you told me you, haven't li you didn't live in Baltimore right away because they sent you out to Rochester. But you've essentially lived in, in Baltimore or the state of Maryland uh, since 1978 for a large part of your years. A uh, lot yeah. of memories packing up now? Oh, my gosh. There's so much stuff. We're going through photographs and things. There's no way. There's not enough walls in the place we're going to to put anything <laughs> on. So uh, we're definitely downsizing. But, yeah, there's a lot of memories. We've just been sitting down there in the basement today and going through old my mom's scrapbooks when I was in high school and stuff. And, oh, my gosh. So, yeah, it's uh, reminiscent, but e exhausting. Yeah. Is there stuff, and I'm not, I'm not kidding, or is there stuff you've brought in somebody to look at from a collectible standpoint that you're yeah. going to yeah, downsize? I a, yeah, I got a friend coming over on Wednesday to take a look at some stuff. Okay. I All offered right. it up to the kids first. I think they grabbed up the good stuff, so we'll see. <laughs> All right. Ross, go ahead. Yeah. Scotty, is, is this something you and Kara, uh, you know, I know you talked about it. You're going to get near, next to the kids a little, a little closer. Is this something you guys uh, talked about? I know uh, you were heading down here uh, back, what was it, March, uh, yeah. April, and uh, and Kara had to go out to California. Her sister had uh, had cancer, uh, who, by the way, I understand is doing a little better. Yeah. Uh, and you yeah. guys were able to come back. But uh, would, did you talk about this before that, or is this something that kind of changed your uh, your yeah. outlook on uh, on things? We've, we've all been talking about it. You're the first one that bit the bullet and went, you know. And, <laughs> and uh, I've talked to Bumbry about it, Tippy about it. Everybody's talking, about, you know. Uh, where do you want to live? Where do you want to end up? You know. And uh, so we've all talked about it and thought about it, and that just this just kind of when we got out there. Uh, and watching Kim go through and just see how Kara had to be there all the time. 
So one night we're just sitting there. She looked over at me. She goes, we're moving. That's it. We're out. I said, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, right. So, the boss uh, has spoken. Yeah, right. So we, uh, we found a nice little place and uh, it's going to be great. You know, right now, your daughter's there. Your son's in North Carolina. Both you of my son, you know, my youngest is in Durham and Eric's in Greenville, South Carolina. Right. So he'll be three hours away and Mike's still five hours away. So that's, you know, it's better than eight. So, yo, yeah. Oh, yeah, really. And, and and we're closer too. So that makes it even better. Yeah. Closer to Florida. Cause we like to go down there. <laughs> and as long really? as you don't, as long as you don't have to drive through DC, you yeah. see, you can go a little bit, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's right. Like, I, I guess your neighbors uh, down the way, are they're a little, uh, Oh, they were mad. Yeah. Yeah. I broke the news to them and they said, dang, all the times we were shooing people out of there didn't work, you know? Yeah, so, right. Yeah. I mean, no, we had a good time. Be sure but, to tell them hi. We had a great time with them. Yeah, they're we, fun. we came over and it's great. Yeah. Any, anyway, let, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the O's. I know you uh, you worked for them for a while. Uh, they're having a year that I don't think many people expected them to have. Uh, the pitching has been fantastic. Uh, just tell us a little bit about your observation, what you, what you've seen and what you think. Well, yeah, I mean, they've, you know, Elias has done a heck of a job picking up people from all over the place and they have just really, I think the, the biggest thing I see is they're getting some of the old Oriole magic back, the confidence. Now, when I watch a game, I, I'm expecting them to win. You know, right. I just okay, what are they going to do? They're going to win, you know, and that's, hasn't been there. It was there when we were there playing and, you used to be able to look over there towards the, the late innings of the game at the team on the other side, and they're kind of looking at you like, okay, what are you guys going to do tonight? <laughs> When's you know, it going to happen? Who's going to be the hero tonight? You know? Well, that's kind of what happened last night. I don't know oh, if you yeah. watched it. That, that, I mean, sitting there watching and bases loaded, next thing you know, I think Mateo hits a, a bases clearing double or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's just – and they've done it so many times this year, yeah. which is really, like you said, brings back that old Oriole magic. But the pitching, the pitching has been incredible. I mean, uh, the starters, you know, right from the get go. One big thing I noticed with with Holty, I know that he was never been a guy for uh, trying to be pinpoint command. He was just saying, throw your best up right from the start. The catchers were sitting right over the middle of the plate and uh, and sit, and making the guys challenge the people and they're shoot. They're going through. They're keeping their games close. The bullpen's been incredible. Incredible. I mean, uh, they're they're gonna. This is a tough time of year because they've been pitching so much. Aiken and and uh, the other one. Uh, yeah, Baker. Baker. You know Baker. the one that gave up the last couple times. Uh, Dylan Tate. Dylan Tate. No. Tate. Uh, Bautista. Baker. Baker. The right. The, is it, is it? the change up guy. Crable. 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 Yeah. It, you know they're, they 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 got to it's a challenge this last month and a half, you know, because uh, they've been working a lot, you know, but yeah, if they, they keep them fresh. You know, Scotty, they, they got the fourth fewest base on balls. That's the one thing I mean, that, yep. that I amazing. noticed. They don't, and the fourth fewest in Major League Baseball, yeah. not the American League, Major League Baseball. Uh, and they don't strike out a lot of people. They're giving up less uh, hits than inning pitched, which is really uh, something yeah. they haven't done in the pack in the past. They're in the middle of the major leagues in strike percentage, so they're throwing strikes, which has yeah. always been something that uh, uh, Oriole pitching staffs has done that have been successful. Uh, the thing that I, I think uh, they're toward the bottom in innings pitched by starters. Yeah. So that, that I think that's something that uh, well, and that's the way way it is. But it's it, yeah. it's the, the worst than than most all the, all the other teams, but that's something I think, and Elias made comment that uh, he was going to, they're going to go out and uh, possibly be uh, active on the free agent market and possibly uh, trading as well. Sure. What, what do you think they're going to obviously go out for starting, uh, starting pitching? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, you, you picked up these guys, you know, that you know, they're doing so good, you know, Watkins and Radish and golly. I mean, Bull, you know, I mean, where, yeah. where do these guys come from? You know, well, really, yeah. and they're doing their job, you know, and, and starting pitching on the market is expensive, but I don't know, you know, what they're going to do with that. But yeah, they need a key there. You know, they need to. Lyle's been great. You know, he's given, you know, he's steady. You know, so they've all been steady. And as long as they keep the mojo, 
And they right, don't right. That. You can add anybody to it because you know that when we were back in the day, I remember one time we were sitting there in 79, 78, and Stoney was pitching against us. And I was sitting, I must have been pitching because I was sitting down near Earl down there and he turned to Bamberger and he said, if we get this guy, can you get him to throw his curveball over the plate? George goes, yeah, we get him over <laughs> here this 24 games. You know? yeah. Anybody yeah, right. that showed up, and yeah, anybody really. that showed up did better. You know, yeah. so when you've got that going, uh, you know, it makes it a lot easier and people will start wanting to come again because they say, and, and, and people are things. starting to show up at the park, you yeah. know, and, uh, which is really uh, Im impressive. But, uh, hey, Scotty, um, you, you've watched the game for a long time. Uh, how did, and I'm not saying he's fully over the hump, but this Mateo was with the Yankees. He got traded to Oakland, and I'm sure it was one of those, we need somebody, so we'll throw in a young kid. Yeah. But then Oakland dealt him to San Diego, and San Diego last year, you know, in May or early June, DFA'd him, and the Orioles got him. This guy's, I mean, I know his, he's had problems at the plate in the past, but he's, his confidence is really building right I now. I mean, he's been, he's been quite a difference maker on that infield, you know, yeah. and the things that he can do, and, uh, and he's getting his at-bats. He's making some adjustments. He's not just easily flailing at that slider yeah. outside anymore. He, he does it a little bit, but it was a great at bat last night. And son of a gun, he gets on base. And look out. I mean, that's one oh. thing about this team, too. They got speed. They got right. four, five guys, not just yeah. him. I mean, <laughs> they can run, you know, and that, we haven't had that no, ever. You know, they're actually using it too to their yeah. advantage, which is yeah. uh, which is really impressive. They've got a lot of good pieces. So, so last night that game was at Williamsport, and yeah. they showed pictures of everybody that when they were playing little league. Did you both play little league ball? Oh well, gosh, yes. I, I know I, I did. I started when I was four years old, right? And and playing in, in in Memphis, and it was a. It was, it was just a fun thing to do, obviously, but, uh, yeah, no, that was, uh, and I'm sure I think Scotty played. I know, I know he, well, he even played when he was uh, on the team with Brett, he was a better hitter than Brett. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it didn't turn out too well that way, but, uh, <laughs> you started when you were four, four. I played little league. It, it started when you were eight. So yeah, I was, no, I, we, I played when I was four. I don't, you know, was it, it wasn't T-ball. Was it T? -ball? No, no, I didn't have, she didn't have a T then. I mean, no, it was, uh, I played right field and I had a pair of rubber cleats and I just kept looking at my shoes. There I thought go. that was the neatest thing in the world. Yeah, that's <laughs> nice. That's hey, nice. So that was, that was that little league that you played with Brett or high school? You no, played high, school. high school. George and I, we, in our town, El Segundo, we had National League and American League. I was on the National League side. George was on the American League. So we didn't play against each other, but then we joined up for All-Stars and well, maybe we didn't. We didn't even join up for all stars. You know, we, we just got together in high school. Now, were you, a talent, huh? were you a talented pitcher then too, or just yeah. a that yeah, I got I was just I was just looking through the scrapbook today my mom had. And and I remember telling the story that when I was a freshman, I pitched a game over at Hawthorne and I got a, a, a scout card from a guy from the Astros. Sure enough, I flipped through the pages today. There's the card. They kept it, told the whole story. I was the freshman in high school punched out like 14 guys and beat the number one team in, in the area. And, and it, all the fireworks went off from there, you know? So now I, we, we, got, we owned the place out there for a while. So it was pretty good. And what round were you drafted by the Yankees? First. You were first round draft pick. Okay. Yeah. 14th. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. That is something. Well, that's what your career was like a first round draft pick. I mean, you had immense talent. There's no question about it, Scotty. Well, I had well, you know, you, you know what? He won he won double figures, what, ten times? Yeah. You pitched he pitched two hundred innings, uh, I think nine out of nine years, you pitched two hundred innings six times. Th these are things that uh, that you probably are not aren't gonna see unless the game changes back to where it was once before and yeah. starting pitching is, uh, uh, is, is needed is, uh, you know, we'll get back to where they need to have starting pitching. 
unless uh, you're going to have 15, 20 guys on a pitching staff. Yeah, it starts, it starts probably in high school now. But I, I threw 200 innings a year in the minor leagues. Yeah. No, I mean, that's, so that's you how you learn to that. pitch. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, know, it's that way, and you're expected to do that. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's funny when uh, when I was down there coaching for years in June, you get all the new draft guys, which was my fun time to watch these kids come in, and they start googling you. Flanny used to say, "Oh, they're going to Google you." And the kid came <laughs> yeah. up to me. Oh yeah. Said, one of the kids came up to me and they said, "Man, we were watching a game the other day. We didn't know you were the closer." I go, "What are you talking about?" Yeah. <laughs> the last game of the World Series. Yeah. You were the closer. I said, "No, I was a starter." They went. You pitched nine innings in the World Series. <laughs> they didn't, it's like wow, they they had no idea that could even happen. You know, no, and and we, which is we, crazy. I, I know that's just... we don't, we always hear about Weaver and Bamberger. When you come over, how important was Palmer to to that that whole mix of teaching you guys well, how to pitch? When I came over, George was here for the first year and a half, uh, but I got called up in 76 and so i'm out in the bullpen earl said hey we we know after i got traded i was like nine and one with six shutouts in syracuse mm. and rochester i was so pissed that they traded me but uh, <laughs> i get called up and earl calls me and says i know we want to see a pitch but you're not going to start until it's all settled i can't do that to the yankees or boston which is great and so i'm pitch i pitched my first start was against milwaukee hank aaron's in there playing his last games and and then I pitched the last day of the season. I'm pitching in, in Boston. And Chopin's catching because he used to do that every year in the last day of the season. And so uh, I get to the ballpark. Where's George? Anybody seen George? <laughs> yeah, he quit. Him and Earl got into it last night. He went home. <laughs> so, so I so wasn't even there for that one. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so then after that, you know, he, he was there in 77, and that's when Earl changed me into the funky ass motion that I had. Because I, I, he saw that, because he'd had McQu uh, McNally, Cuellar, and he saw that they had, and, and Grimsley, you know, he mm -hmm. saw he had the off speed, because everything in mine was hard sliders. Hard, I threw hard then, you know, but uh, uh, he just realized that I, he said, you're going to throw BP today, and you're going to throw your curveball in the 60s. So I'm out there throwing and I can't even get it close to that. I'm like, what was that? 73. Uh, <laughs> so I just come up and I stop and then I flipped it up there and there it was. And I ended up with that silly ass, you know, motion that I ended up, which was deceptive. And then the yep. change up came along and, but George, George was just, was good there for that. But I used to tell people, you know, God rest his soul. Ray Miller's not with us anymore, but people say, you know, when I came up, this guy sitting next to me had just has won three Cy Youngs and eight out of the last nine years, 20 games. Who do you think's the pitching coach? You know, <laughs> I mean, if I'm if I need to ask somebody something, am I going to Ray, who I pitched against, and 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 I, I got base hits off of him in the minor leagues? You know, yeah. So uh, it's just kind of like Leo Mazzoni with three of those guys sitting over there, and he's getting yeah. hit my buns. You didn't do nothing, man. <laughs> He would take Mazzoni would take what he heard from Maddox, and he would when Glavin would throw him aside, he would go, uh, you know, he, he did point your toe at uh, at the outside corner, and uh, you know, you he said you've been talking to you've been talking to Maddox, hadn't you? He goes, no, he goes, oh yeah, yeah. And he was he, he the first year Flanny was there in Lauderdale at that gate where he would stand right you know between the dugout and the bullpen and i was with leo that day and he was working with one of the young kids chris Britton, who i had had in the minor leagues and he just threw a lot of strikes and 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 i'm sitting there watching him and he's struggling a little bit because leo was very intimidating he was always screaming oh yeah him. and so he he pitches up Britton was one of the guys that pitched up well leo's yelling at him to get down get the ball down get the ball down just yelling it, just yelling more. And so Flanny's back there. I, I, st I start backpedaling and I turn to Flanny. I go, this guy doesn't have any idea what he's doing. Flanny goes, please don't say anything. Please, <laughs> oh, Peter, do not sign this guy. Do not. Oh, God. <laughs> well, you know, know, it's funny. I remember the year before we, we brought Mazzoni in and it was really exciting that we're getting this great pitching coach. I remember, remember the left-hander that had been a Braves prospect five years before, Bruce yeah. Chen? 
Yeah. He had a very nice year with the Orioles, but I understand that he never got along with Mazzoni in Atlanta, and he no. was never the same pitcher. In no, Baltimore. he was good with us, but when Leo came, he was. And like I used to talk up. to him about because I knew that. I go, hey man, he and he, you could just see it. Just he was freaked out. Oh, unbelievable, yeah. unbelievable. That happens. <laughs> Ross, you got you got one. So, Scotty, you, know, you you coach with them for how long? You're in the organization. Eighteen years. Eighteen years, and you went up and uh, you're up and down. You went to the big leagues a lot of times at the request of uh, uh, of the what the, the pitching coach or the manager or the general manager. Yeah, well, just a couple situations. The year right, that right. The, the year that uh, Buck came in, and he got Connor to come because he was his right. Guy. But Connor didn't want to do it. Yeah, and he yeah. finally just told Flanny because he said, "I can't do this anymore. It's just I, I can't sleep. I get nothing." So uh, Adair came in to be the right. pitching coach, and they had Crowley and right. everybody filled in. And I finally came up at, at, after Aberdeen was over, and I was there for September. And then uh, then I came August and September, the one year when all that funny stuff happened with the coaches and stuff. Right, right. Now, was going. Did, so let did me you, go. Uh, did let did me you go, go ahead, ahead go, Stan. No, go, go ahead. Okay. Just, uh, I just want to touch base on one thing. Adair was there when Arietta was coming up. I always thought Buck's worst mistake was not keeping Cran uh, uh, Rich Krivak, uh, Cran Cranick. Cran the, the, the pit Cranich, Rich Cranich. I thought that was his worst mistake because he didn't get the guy he wanted. He got the guy that Connor had hired to be the bullpen coach in Adair. I heard nightmare stories about the relationship between Arietta and Adair. Oh, you know, that it was them. just awful. All of them. And yeah. that, I mean, Steve McCaddy was here and he was with Detroit when Adair got banged the first time and he took over for him. And so when Cat was here in AAA, they, you know, he, he he didn't want anything to do with him, but, you know, he had his issues, no doubt. But, you know, guys came out later. Like, I think uh, Zach Britton, I was up there in September all the time if I was in town, if they were in town. And he said, Mac, we used to, he, he would just get hammered and call him at two in the morning, the guys, and just scream at him. You know? Scream at him. And I, he was I, doing that to Buck, too. You know, oh, so – off the, anyway, you know, off he, the, he had he had some issues yeah, you know, off the field. It was uh, yeah. it led to a lot of that, I think. And so he, yeah, he it had was, a couple of cocktails too. That, that was a tough. Know. That was a tough time for the pitchers. You know, the thing is, my first ten years of coaching when I was in Aberdeen and then Frederick and Bowie. Every two years, we had a new general manager and a new manager and a new pitching yep. coach. So yeah. every two years. Every so how do you years. build anything with that? You can't. Yeah, yeah. And, and you, you survive that. Well, you know, that's the funny thing. Uh, Ron Jackson, God rest his soul, too. Yeah. He, he came over from Boston. He was with us for a while. And we were sitting in the coach's room in spring training. And, and the system had had another bad year. And he goes, guys, I can't believe this, this system. And he goes, hey, he goes we were in Boston. We played like none of us. They'd have fired all of us. And he said, you know, we all should be fired. You know, and so I think Elias finally came along and said, okay, I'm going to fire all these guys. <laughs> try something new, you know, get rid of these old guys and their salaries, you know. Have you ever sat down with Chris Holt? Do you understand yeah. what he, uh, well, how I, much do you respect Chris? Well, Chris, you know, definitely when he came over, I'm down there in spring training and the first year he was there. And so I'm, I'm in the middle of all the, the, the transition going on. And, uh, I would sit there and watch. I tell you what, the guy's a student of what he's doing. He mm -hmm. is unbelievably. I mean, he he took every kid in there, and it was long. I said, "Oh God, I got to go through this again because we we're going to be here till five o'clock after the workout." Mm -hmm. He knew everything about every one of those kids that walked in there. He knew exactly their pitches. He knew family. He knew stuff. And I, and I told him afterwards, "I go, man, I tell you what, I mean, and." Uh, he was very strong coming in, and so was Mike Elias. And uh, and I would sit there and watch him. And there's times I'm going, "Hey, I I can see what you're talking about. I know you want me to say it's spin rate, but yeah, I'm sitting there watching when they got the rap soto and the camera back here. The guy'll throw a curveball and it'll just spin out. They'll go, "Where was my hand?" I go, "You didn't know." 
I said, I can tell you, I don't need to look at that. Your hand was right here, and that's why the yeah, ball right. was you need to get your so they turn around and look at the thing and they go, You're right. You know, so uh, I said, you know, Chris, I, I got 20 years of this and my eyes have seen this. And so I understand what you're saying. And this generation of kids, yeah, that's what they like. Yeah. They're coming out of college because we'd sit there flan. I mean, Davy Schmidt and I would sit there in Florida after the draft and all the pitchers would come in and we'd have to interview each and every one of them. They all knew their spin rates. They all knew. <laughs> I'm just going, okay, yeah, this is where it's at. That's you know, great yeah, that's great you know. to hear. Yeah, Ross, sure. you got a couple more and we'll let all Scotty right. go finish packing. Yeah, no, I know. he's. he's I mean, Scotty, do, do you miss it now or is it uh, all the analytical data that's thrown out there? I know uh, 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 who just got fired from the uh, Angels? Um, Madden. Madden. Joe Madden got – uh, he's not in a hurry to get back in the game. Yeah. He, he just goes, it's uh, it's too much. Uh, it's different. There's probably two managers in Major League Baseball that actually have control of the team. Two managers, and I can guess who they are, but uh, and the rest is run by the people higher up or whoever. Yeah. But uh, I mean, I mean, if, if you could get back in the game now, uh, would you do it? No. And 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 no. you know what? I've asked I've asked probably eight people that. And yeah. every one of them have said no. These are ex-baseball you know, people. I, I, I don't. I say no because I just don't even want to deal with all that paperwork right. and digging and learning all that stuff. But I, I, I do miss pouring into the kids and being able to talk to them. And and uh, you know, I, I told Holty. He's he's he laughed at me. I go okay. I got all your analytics. I got all this stuff. I said, but if you're in Yankee Stadium with 53,000 people calling your mother names, <laughs> yeah. the camera's going to make a difference. And he looked at me like, mm, no. Like, no, that's that's the difference, you know. And that's yeah, where. Really. We're, but the thing is, it's you know we used to Palmer and us every day. Boddicker, Flanny, we'd be out shagging in the outfield every day. We we'd spin it. You know, we'd get to catch a fly ball from shagging and say, hey, get down. And, you know, okay, yeah. there's that, there's that, there's that. We worked on, we just refined it every day. And if I was in a slump, I'd just grab Elrod every day, say, Elrod, let's go. We got to get on the mound because we got to, I got to get the feel back. Because once you get the feel back, your brain lets go and you're fine. Yeah. yeah. So these guys, they're, they're on it, you know, big time. It's just scientifically. Doing yeah. it. But these guys are figuring out how to do it on the field and make the pitches when they need to. And that's good. Yeah, well, whatever Holt's doing, uh, and the and the pitching people, they they've they've got something going, and it's been yeah. uh, very impressive. Yeah. And uh, yeah. uh, hats off to them. Yeah, you got to. You know, it's they they came in with guns blazing and changed everything, and everybody went, "Oh gosh, what's going on?" Yeah. You know? yeah. But you know, the proof's in the pudding if they keep it going. Exactly. I got one last question for you. You've sure. been around the Orioles. At, as recently enough to know what you've seen at DL Hall. You've oh. seen him a little bit, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, I saw him when he first signed and, and down there in spring training. And he had a great arm. He has a great arm. He had a big curveball before, but you know, just watching him the other day. Now he reminded me, you now he throws a lot harder than I did, but he reminded me like what I said. When he came up, everything's hard. There needs to, I think he needs a little separation. He threw a couple good changeups in that second inning. He was he threw a couple changeups. Yeah. My yeah. question, yeah. my yeah. question about him though was, do you see him ultimately? Here's a guy. He's a Triple A this year. He averaged three point two innings per start. Doesn't that tell you that he's not really a starter because he's throw, he's got to uh, they... throw too many pitches? Yeah, I mean, that's that's the big difference in the game today is they've got these innings blocked out, you know, and and that's that's just the way it is. But then to hear them say they're going to send him back down and put him in the bullpen. So I'm going, okay, what? but, you know, All right. we'll see. But he's All got right. a great arm. And so yeah. does uh, Rodriguez. And it's yeah. a shame he got hurt. Yeah. yeah. Adrian. Hey, hey, we wish you nothing but the best, Scott. Thank you. You've, you've always been uh, – uh, a fan favorite in Baltimore, and we trust we'll see you around occasionally. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate it, Stan. And, you know, I, 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 I never really used to like you, but that's, you know, it's okay now. 
<laughs> All those guys back in those days. The only one that grew to like me a little bit was Singleton. Kenny liked yeah, I think. But, yeah. but those were the old days. Hey, yes, thank, they were. Thank you They're... very much for doing this again. And we'll grab you again sometime. All right. All right. Good Thanks, night, Scotty. See you. Take care. Hey. All right. Hey. All right. Good, good, good luck with the move. All right. Thank you. Just got to tell folks a little bit more about the Costas in before we get out of here. And Scotty, you that's good. Yeah, I was going to say, Scotty, you don't have to stay. Um, the Costas in again, they've stepped up their game plan as far as curbside pickup. Go to costasin.com, order your food, pay for it online, and then pick it up. But you don't even have to get out of your car. Uh, a lot of people like that. Costas in 4100 North Point Boulevard. Uh, and the address is 4100 North Point Boulevard. Uh, Stan, they'll send it to you. They'll send you food. That's right. They will. Order it online. I get, uh, I've got crab cakes. I got my buddy coming down here in uh, October. He's bringing some crab cakes. And uh, so, yeah, they will send them to you. You can order food and they'll get it to you. All right. Um, listen, I've got an invite out to our friend Jim Duquette. I bumped right. into him at the park for next Monday night. I've offered up five or six o'clock. Okay. Yeah. And I'll see if he's able to do that. Uh, okay. We're not announcing that officially that he's doing right. it. I just wanted Ross to know. Uh, and our pick em pull starts in a couple of weeks, Ross. I'm I sending heard out that. the rules, all right? Yeah, okay. All right. All same right, uh, same format as last year, possibly? We're going to change one thing. We're going to change one thing. Uh, the pick six, we're only going to let a maximum of five people win it, or else oh, the okay. money rolls over. Well, my right? donation's on the way. All right, buddy. <laughs> Give my best to Bird. All right. I will, buddy. Thanks, I'll man. I'll talk to you soon. That was really right. nice catching up with McGregor. Oh, yeah, it's always great. I knew he was uh I knew he was busy, but I, I wanted to get to him because I knew he was he was moving and it was uh they've had a tough summer uh with Kara's sister, but that seems to be uh uh a little better now. Trending but, a yeah. little better. Yeah, now. yeah. You know, um um you know, and I know Scotty didn't like me. I knew I knew that. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but seriously, uh, Saturday, it was great. Boog Pal Bobblehead. I went yes. out to the oh, stand. Oh, I saw the pictures, yeah. I went out to the stand with my cousin Ron Matz, and we went to say hello to Boog. And there must have been, Ross, seriously, 500 exactly. people waiting uh, there to talk to him. There's always a ton of people there, yes. He, he, he saw about 100 of them and signed his bobbleheads for people yeah. and took pictures. And then they whisked him away because he had to do something. He had yeah. to talk to the team. But, but the fans gave him a great ovation out there. He would have stayed. He would have stayed and signed 500 autographs. I understand that. He you was, know, he, he that's just the way he is. But he's a remarkable guy. Yeah. And yeah. the town been through some tough times as well. Yes, he has. Terrible this last year, yeah. You tough. know, I wanted to say one thing. You know, there's they use Brooks, you know sparingly and they got eddie that they right. do and they 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 still have deals i think with brian roberts and dempsey but i'm telling you and i nicknamed them the mayor of camden yards nobody has done more for that organization since camden yards than boot pal oh, he's yeah. the guy who's been out there touching people right every night and nobody has that touch with the fans the way Boog Pal does. He's got the and gift of gab with him too. He does have he's, he's got some great stories to tell. Call him up tonight. He's over his friend Randy's. They went crabbing today. Oh, so, naturally. Yeah. I tried, I tried to, to get him to come up here in Bradenton with the with the boat. Right. <laughs> right. A, I don't yeah. think he likes to do the boat. No, by I know. Anymore. I know. All right. I Ross, Hi, good buddy. seeing you. I'll talk to you next week. Gotcha. Uh, see you soon. Gary Stein and, I'll, and I will be on Thursday night. No guest yet determined. See you soon. Thank you.